When it comes to access ports and trunk ports, these terms are ex mutually exclusive. A Cisco switch port can be either an access port or a trunk port. It cannot be both, and you're about to see exactly why. Because access ports belong to one and only one VLAN. It's a phrase we're going to come back to a couple of times in this section. One and only one VLAN, and an access port literally cannot trunk. And you can see the VLAN membership of all your access ports with Show VLAN or Show VLAN Brief. And let me line that up for you. I've got Show VLAN Brief here. And you can see I've got a couple of empty VLANs there, 20 and 30, that we might just be using later. We've got the other four default VLANs there at the bottom. And right now, all of our ports are in VLAN 1. Haven't changed a thing. Or have I? Let's talk about this trunk ports for a second. Trunk ports belong to all the VLANs. That's how they handle being a trunk. And as you'd expect, they can trunk. Now, we verify trunk ports with Show Interface Trunk. Trunk ports won't appear in Show VLAN or Show VLAN Brief because you may have noticed in these ports that all of a sudden we went from port 1 to port 4 and then 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, etc. I promise you I'm not hiding ports 2 or 3 over here on the side either. And that's the kind of thing that can give you a little panic at first because it's like, okay, where did my ports 2 and 3 go? Well, they didn't really go anywhere as much as they're trunking right now. And we can verify that with Show Interface Trunk. And there they are. So if you're up here looking for ports in Show VLAN or Show VLAN Brief, and you don't see them, run Show Interface Trunk and see if you're already trunking. All kinds of things going on down here. Let's take a look. Going from left to right in that first set, we've got four sets of information here with mode, encapsulation, status, and native VLAN. Well, encapsulation 802.1q, we know what it's talking about there. It's the trunking protocol. And status is trunking, otherwise it would be not trunking, which is not what we want. The native VLAN is one at the default. And that mode of desirable, okay, well that doesn't mean anything to us yet, but it will in a moment. And the information you see, VLANs allowed on each trunk, 1 through 4094. And those VLANs 20 and 30 we saw a few minutes ago, and actually can still see at the top of this screen, out of show VLAN brief, they are allowed and active in management domain and in spanning tree forwarding state and not pruned. Take it for me, that is all good stuff. So, so far so good there. Now, what I want to do is use iOS help to display the port's trunking options. And let's go ahead and bring that up here. And let's see, we have access dynamic and trunk here. Now on some other switches, you might see .1Q tunnel and private VLAN options, and we're not working with those anyway. So the three that we're seeing right here are definitely for your current studies, active, dynamic, and trunk. Now active, access and trunk, pretty darn self-explanatory, but I'm gonna explain it to you anyway here on the board in a moment. And dynamic, that has some options you can't see from here. Let me go ahead and show you what I'm talking about. Because then we have two modes of dynamic, auto and desirable. And there's that desirable that we saw up, and it's at the top of the screen right now. When I ran show interface trunk, you can see under mode of desirable. So taking a quick look here, first at the switch port mode iOS help output with access, dynamic, and trunk. Well, access and trunk sent the trunking mode unconditionally. Dynamic set trunking mode to dynamically negotiate access or trunk mode. And then we've got some auto or desirable. So we got a lot of options here. And that's why I put them on the board for you so we could see them all together. Now, these modes, access makes the port an access port. We know the deal, one and only one VLAN. In effect, what you were doing when you put a port into access mode is that you've turned trunking off on that port. Trunk, the opposite of access, if you will. This option turns trunking on unconditionally. Dynamic negotiates trunking dynamically. And I realize that's a blinding glimpse of the obvious, a BGO. But dynamic also has a couple of other options we need to know about that we just saw. And you have to choose one of these. And just a quick reminder, when you're using iOS help to see your next options and you do not see CR right here, that means you have an incomplete command right here. You've got to enter something else. Because if I backspace and then try to enter switch port mode dynamic as a command, it's going to tell me point blank, incomplete command. Not going to work out. So let's talk about what these two modes mean, auto and desirable. Because I got a fifth option 
that didn't even show up here because it doesn't appear with the others. It's called switch port no negotiate. So we actually have five different options for our trunk ports. Now the first two, easy. Unconditional trunking, switch port mode trunk. Unconditional non-trunking, switch port mode access. Now we have active dynamic trunking if we choose desirable to go with switch port mode dynamic. Switch port mode dynamic desirable means the port is actively attempting to trunk. If the remote, po excuse me, the remote port is in on desirable or auto mode, then you're going to form a trunk. So if we have an active dynamic trunking, the other one must be a passive dynamic trunking. It sounds odd, passive dynamic trunking. But that's what you have here with switch port mode dynamic auto. Now this means the port is certainly open to trunking, but the other side of the trunk has to initiate the process. If the remote port is in desirable or on mode, you have a trunk. If both sides are in auto, no trunk is going to form because each end is saying, okay, I'm waiting for that other side of this trunk to, nego to initiate things. So if you use auto, that's fine. You just don't want to use it on both sides. Switch port no negotiate puts a port into permanent trunking mode, but these dynamic trunking protocol DTP frames are not sent across the trunk. And what DTP is, it's a negotiation protocol, and it's used to decide which trunking protocol to use if both switches support both protocols and whether trunking is to occur at all. So it's a little less overhead if you're knocking out those DTP frames. Now here's what I was talking about a while back when I said, you know, you may have created a trunk without even knowing any of this stuff because you might not even know the trunking protocols existed when you did it. You might not even know the modes existed when you did it. We have a trunk between two switches in our lab right now, actually several trunks between several switches in our lab right now, and I did not enter a single command to make any of that happen. And you're gonna see exactly how coming up next.